Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, Tati Westbrook. Let's get into it. Hey cuties and welcome back to my channel for another video. If you wanna join the cuties family, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the little bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. All my social medias, my Discord, and my Patreon will be linked down below. It's very likely that this video is going to get demonetized because we're gonna be talking about some sensitive subjects. So if you want me to continue making videos, you can join my Patreon and support my content and get access to special features like Zoom calls, group Zoom calls, personal Zoom calls, access to a lot of behind the scenes stuff, early videos, etc, etc. Before we jump into this video, I want to give a shout out to some of my patrons. Shout out to Tori Tindal, Edward Sangsaken, I think I said that right. I hope I said that right. Shout out to Sophie Myers and Victoria Jackson. Thank you guys so much for supporting my content on Patreon. You have no idea how much it means to me and especially the fact that a lot of my videos do get demonetized. So this is my source of income, Patreon, plus the videos that are monetized. So thank you so much for supporting my content. I love you guys more than you can ever know. Okay. Now let's jump into the video. Okay, so first we're going to go over all the stuff that Shane Dawson is being canceled for. Like we're gonna show the videos, we're gonna talk about it. Then we're gonna talk about the whole Tati situation, her video, which was like 40 minutes long. And uh, we'll go through the whole like Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star conspiring against James Charles. We'll talk about that. But first let's go over Shane Dawson and why this guy is getting canceled right about now. So if you don't know who Shane Dawson is, he is one of the oldest YouTubers, like one of the original big YouTubers. And for me, I specifically make it a point to like not support really big YouTubers. Sometimes I will if I do really enjoy their content or I watch them from a young age. But Shane Dawson was one of those people who I just never had an interest in any of his videos. I've never subscribed to him. I never thought his videos were interesting until he made those videos about the Paul brothers and whether or not they're like sociopaths or whatever. Those are the only videos I've ever watched of Shane Dawson's. And to be honest, it just felt like it was four videos of like the same shit, just like dragging on really long. I remember watching those and I was talking to my friend who also does YouTube and I was talking to them and they were like, oh yeah, you watched those? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, what did you think about them? And I was like, oh, I thought they were like interesting. I think the Paul brothers like, you know, have their own issues or whatever. And he's like, I actually think that Shane Dawson is the sociopath. And I was like, what? Like, he just seemed so emotional and like, you know, whatever in the videos. I just, I couldn't pick it out so clearly. And he was like, no, like I'm convinced Shane Dawson. And this was like a while ago. He was like, no, I'm convinced Shane Dawson is a sociopath. I was like, damn, am I missing something? Like, did I not see this when I watched his videos? And it's so crazy that my friend like Loki predicted this <laughs> happening. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I ever knew any of this shit. Uh, I, I never really liked Shane Dawson. I'm, I liked supporting smaller unproblematic YouTubers and supporting their content or even bigger YouTubers that aren't as controversial, etc, etc. But yeah, I genuinely now looking at all of this stuff, like I don't know how Shane Dawson made it past like half of these scandals. And this is why cancel culture is so annoying because we don't actually end up canceling the person. You need to, when someone does something this horrifically bad, you need to completely retract all support from them. And it's crazy how these people like Trisha Paytas and Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson and all of these people just keep surviving scandals. And it's like, at what point are they just like uncancelable? You know what I mean? Like they can just do, say, and be whoever they want and the world just can't cancel them because they're too rich and they're too powerful. So I think we need to start normalizing, deplatforming people. When something is this serious, the fact that you would make jokes and and in some ways be a, a pedophile apologist is completely unacceptable. The, the racial content that he's made, I don't even know how he stayed on YouTube this long. It's actually mind boggling to me that he stayed on YouTube this long and hasn't been completely canceled. But I think we're coming into a generation now where we really want to be holding people accountable for their actions because a lot of the time the excuse we use on the internet is, oh, it was just a joke. But at what point does a joke become something harmful? 
at what point does a joke perpetuate an ideology that is dangerous? At what point are we able to differentiate a joke from a serious thought that's being passed off as a joke? Damn, I forget what the word is, but there's a specific word for this when a guy will say something, like an actual opinion, but it's something super controversial. And if nobody agrees with it, he'll go, ha ha ha, like I'm just joking. I forget what the word is, but there's an actual word for it. And it's men who do this, who will usually say a, a sexist comment or a misogynistic comment. And when no one in the room is like, yeah, ha ha, you know what I mean? He'll be like, oh, you know, like I was just joking, guys. It was just a joke, ha ha, dark humor. This is what I feel like Shane Dawson does a lot. He passes off a lot of his actual thoughts as jokes it's a hard line and for that when you cross the line so distinctly and abruptly and disgustingly as to be a pedophile apologist i i don't think it's joking anymore he's made too many dark jokes for this to be just passed off as a joke anymore and at this point like how are we able to identify actual pedophiles they could all just say oh i'm just joking about that ha 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 i didn't actually do that to a kid how would you know and at that point isn't that a red flag to say hey it's not even cool for you to be joking about that okay anyways let's get into what he did so this person on twitter named miss hemlock made a whole thread of all the stuff that Shane has done mostly around sexualizing children. So we're gonna go through this and watch it. I think there's probably other things that I'll include in this that aren't in the thread, but I'll have to find those after. And I just want to address the fact that he was a grown adult in all of these videos. I'm younger than he was in all of these videos. And it is completely unacceptable. I don't care if you're saying, oh, I was young and I was in a bad place. This shit is unacceptable period i don't care what age you were i don't care what kind of dark ass place you were in this is deplorable this is the first video he abuses a power dynamic with a fan on omega and we'll just watch what happens yeah yeah <laughs> i love you too can you twerk for us i know twerking is insane oh i love you too oh i love you too now shut up and twerk Maybe she can't hear us. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. Twerk for us. <laughs> oh, Here we go. She's she open front of us. Oh, yeah! 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now tell her to show herself. Stop it, Shaylee. <laughs> and that was his mother? That was his mom encouraging that behavior? That was a young girl. She was underage. Yeah, so here is a video from a podcast. This child was probably six years old. And um, I was taking a picture of something and the kid turns to me and goes, oh, are you Instagramming? And first of all, how does a five-year-old, six-year-old know what Instagram is? Right. Which is terrifying. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I was embarrassed because yes, I was. And it was a picture of my salad. <laughs> and the six-year-old girl goes, um, oh, how many followers do you have? I have 125,000. No. Her dick was almost as big as mine. Really? And I said, okay, little big dick. Why do you have so many followers? And she goes, oh, I'm a cheerleader. And I'm like, oh, really? And she shows me her Instagrams, which are like, first of all, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but like, she's like sexy. She's like sexy. You're disgusting. I know. Listen, we've talked about pedophilia before. No, no, this before. is the, Shane, like, <laughs> like, do not say this. And do, like, I don't even want to talk about it. Like, you will get arrested. <laughs> Like he kind of can, he, Listen, he has this justification, justification for pedophilia okay. and it's so disturbing and like I, I just pretend that he doesn't. <laughs> okay, wait, no, like, no, let me explain, let no. me explain. Oh God. Here's my justification for pedophilia. I can't. Here's my thing. People have foot fetishes, people have fetishes about, you know, everything. Fine, everybody do your thing. So why is it when somebody looks at a Google's like naked baby on Google and jerks off to it, they can get arrested? Because, I don't understand because that. Here's so the like, worst part of it. I actually went to Google and I'm like, oh I don't want to see. You can I don't get wanna, arrested. I know, but I just wanted to see like, okay, let me just pretend, yeah. let me pretend like I'm a pedophile for a sec. So I typed in naked baby. First of all, they were sexy. <laughs> okay, back to the Instagram. Um, so I look at this little girl's pictures and she had makeup on. She had her tongue out. She was doing like the peace sign. She was doing a backflip. Is she like Honey Boo Boo? Is she fat? No, she was like a skinny little sexy six-year-old. Oh my God. Okay, so I just want to point out first in that video the fact that the host of the podcast 
literally said i don't want to talk about this said shane please don't talk about this like literally she already knew what he was going to say and his justification for this and she was like hey i just really don't want to talk about this this is illegal you could probably get in trouble the fact that he admits to searching up those photos because he wanted to see what it was like it's like as if i were to say oh, i want to see what it was like to be a murderer so i just stabbed someone that's illegal even if you're saying i want to see what it's like to be a pedophile that's being a pedophile through and through and the fact that he thinks that this is some sort of justification that this is somehow consistent with fetish culture is completely untrue and here's why the ideas of like a foot fetish and all of those those are victimless fetishes sexualizing children is never a victimless crime because those children cannot consent nor can they even understand what is happening or what is being done to their photos or whatever. When you look up photos or videos of that, those are children who are being manipulated and abused. And even if it's like a, a harmless photo, you are victimizing that child. You are turning that child into something sexual. They are a minor. They are barely even a human at that point. That's just absolutely deplorable and disgusting. And the fact that you can try to justify it as a fetish, fetishes don't have victims. Fetishes are not a crime. A child cannot consent. Therefore, it's a crime through and through. Time to see some hot sexy bitches wearing my Hot Topic shirts. Damn. Oh, if I Justine wasn't watching, I would rape all of you. Hmm. All right, you guys, all right now. That's not even funny. Like, in what world is that shock value humor? Oh my God. God, Jesus Christ. As someone who has been there, as someone who is a survivor of sexual assault, that's fucked up. That you would ever even think about saying that. That's disgusting. I'm like physically angry. How did he survive past that video? How did he make that video and not be canceled in that moment? <laughs> Oh my god, he what? does this every time. Oh yeah, daddy likes. Yeah, so apparently he's had this like weird history of like being inappropriate with his animals as well. And I'll play you guys a video one second. Okay, here it is. No, my dog's a really needy guy. No, <laughs> the things I've done to my poor animals, they will never love me. Mm. Done terrible things. I used to. Oh, <laughs> oh no, I don't know if you want to go there, Shane. What'd you do? <laughs> One time, I laid my cat down on her back. Are you gonna get arrested for this? I don't. I don't know. No. Think about it. Mm, I don't think so. Okay, go ahead. I didn't penetrate. <laughs> I laid the cat down on her back, I didn't and then penetrate. I, I, I Whoa. moved her little chicken legs, like you know, spread open or whatever. And I was like, if I just like hump. But like on her tummy, like that's not weird. Like whatever. And then I humped and I humped and I humped and it kept going, kept going like all over the cat. No, you did not. It was like my first sexual experience. No I was also way. like 19. <laughs> so it's like, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Did you just say you came on my cat? Guys, I think I have to put money in the meter. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, but you know who likes cats? I never did anything like that. Well, I never did anything crazy like that. Maybe that's dog. why you don't like pussy anymore. And to me, the way he even describes that is so realistic. Like, it doesn't sound like he's joking. It was too detailed. It sounded like a real experience. And that is assault of an animal. That is sexual assault. If you did that to a human being, that would be assault. That is bestiality and that is abuse of an animal. Someone take his animals away, please. Like, I don't care if you were 19 years old. Who the fuck would do that? That's disgusting. The poor cat, oh my god. Here's another video. Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, it is me, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. And I just want to let you know that I, Liberty Van Fent, am choosing you to be my new object of affection. You should be! I'm sorry, when I become Nikki, I just get so angry. Even that girl's so sexy. Dude, are you crazy? Look at you. Where'd you get your pants at? Look, it's like little Shanae. H&M. Girl, ooh, that sounds dirty. That sounds rough. H&M. <laughs> Good job, Lucy. But next time, shake your titties more. And you, take off the jacket and show more. And Lucy, I checked my statistics and I have a lot of child molesters watching. So can you please eat a cocktail weenie? Do it slow. <laughs> oh. Oh, 
I like uh, that chocolate, that weenie. Ooh, it tastes also good. Do you like an Asian like? Okay, give her a lap dance. What? <laughs> All you ladies hot, feel pussy like this. Shake your body, don't stop, don't miss. All you ladies hot, feel pussy like this. Shake your body, don't stop, don't miss. Just do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it now. Lick it good, suck this pussy just like this. I blow everybody a kiss like you're a mermaid. That was the worst kiss I've ever seen. That was terrible. I would never have sex with you. Wow, look at those titties. Oh, man. <laughs> man, 12 year Oh, chocolate's getting in them. I didn't know 12 year olds develop that fast. Wait, let chocolate lick your boobs. Look at <laughs> Wow. Girl, why are you so wet? You know what you should do to dry yourself off? Go dance on top of that table over there. She didn't even hesitate. Okay! <laughs> Get that dubstep dance. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, we don't want to. Yeah, we okay. don't want to have sex with you yet. Yeah. There we okay. go. And I'm going to insert some screenshots of people sharing their stories of when they met Shane Dawson um, because it's quite disturbing and you guys can pause the video and read them if you'd like um, just to add more context just to add more context to the story and the fact that it was real people that he was actually hurting behind the scenes because if he was able to um, talk about these things and do these things on video I can only imagine what he felt he was able to do when the camera wasn't on. Oh God, oh, I'll whip your hair back and forth. Oh. Trayvon Martin. <laughs> well, maybe you wouldn't been walking this around the streets if you had a job. Oh! <laughs> if you didn't know that Trayvon Martin was a black child who was fatally shot by a racist citizen, he was shot for being suspicious in a neighborhood. He was unarmed, just walking through. He was walking home from the store carrying Skittles and iced tea and was shot to death and the murderer was let off because of the stand your ground law. And Shane Dawson really had the audacity to even make a joke about that. Okay, ready? All right, three, two. Okay, ready? All right. There's plenty more videos than that and you can probably go find them if you search hard enough. There's also a video where he takes his 12 year old cousin or something like that into a room privately and tries to explain to her what sex is and it's extremely inappropriate the fact that he had to take her into a private room and lower his voice and videotape the whole thing it just was extremely inappropriate and although he addresses it in his apology video the fact that his you know aunt and uncle or whatever like his family members weren't upset about it it doesn't matter that to me is so inappropriate especially to go into another room without someone's parents consent and to like privately videotape, have to lower your voice and be like in a different room. Like it, to me, it just screams inappropriate. And the fact that you were having such a sexualized conversation with a minor is extremely disgusting. All of those videos disturb me to my very core. You can pass this off as just joking, just joking as much as you want, but where do we draw the line of joking? Where do we draw the line that this person should not have a platform anymore because their jokes have been extremely harmful and dangerous, disrespectful and deplorable enough that we need to just let them go. We just need to let their platform go. They have clearly not done much good. I want to talk about Shane Dawson's apology. Although I do think his apology was a lot better than the ones he's done in the past, it seemed actually very sincere and coming from a place of, of pure regret. He does admit in the video that he's been trying to push this all under the rug for so long, which is completely unacceptable. If you as a grown 31 year old man cannot own up to your mistakes and your actions and your downfalls, 
then you shouldn't be on a platform. You should not be influencing people. You should not be having any sort of power on this internet. His apology was whatever. And the fact that he blamed these incidences on mental illness and I was in a dark place and yada yada yada. Honey, I have been in a dark place. I have lived in the psych ward. I have gone through a year bout of depression where I couldn't even get out of bed and I lost 30 pounds because I wasn't eating. I never once was a pedophile apologist. I never once sexualized a minor. I never once was a racist. So you're telling me that your dark place led you to make those jokes. Maybe that's just a dark place inside of you. Maybe that's just a dark place inside of your mind where those thoughts actually occur. Because if you thought even in the slightest that those jokes were funny, that just shows that you have some sort of darkness inside of you that you need to work through privately in therapy and not bring it onto a social media platform. And you needed to own up for those mistakes, which you didn't do until now, until people are finally calling you out in this day and age. That is unacceptable. I don't think that blaming this on mental health or mental illness is okay. Because I'm someone who suffers from severe mental illness. And so many other people do. And they would never stoop to this level of disgusting behavior. You were in a dark place, so you harassed and, and touched and creeped out children? No, no, that's, that's not how this works. I also think another layer to this is the fact that he was abused as a child in, in those types of manners. And I don't know if maybe, and I'm not trying to make excuses for him or anything, but I do know that people deal with traumas with humor a lot of the time. I know I do. That does not mean what he said was ever acceptable, but I think a part of me wants to believe that he's trying to justify what happened to him as a child by almost justifying pedophilia and justifying these horrific sexual acts. That does not make it okay. It's still disgusting and it's still wrong. But a part of me hopes that he realizes that maybe that's what he was doing and gets help for that. Because if he had gone through something similar like that when he was a kid, that's unacceptable that he is now bringing that into his life and doing that to other kids in even the slightest sense or making other people feel like it's okay to do that to other kids because what happened to you Shane was wrong and unacceptable what you did was unacceptable as well and does not in any way justify those acts it's criminal through and through it's disgusting through and through there's no justification for it child crimes are not victimless crimes they always have a victim therefore they are always intrinsically inherently wrong so Tati Westbrook came out with a 40 minute video and although I thought it was way too long and was filled with way too much fluff she just kept talking about random stuff and going on in long tangents she cried a little bit too much which I know I shouldn't complain about because I cry in literally every video because I'm an emotional bitch her crying was like a little bit overboard and to the points that she was trying to make it seemed almost borderline manipulative. Oh my god. my god. You are so manipulative. You're fake, you're fake crying. You are fake crying. You are fake crying. That is not real. Oh my god. But leaving all of that aside, I do think her video was very compelling and to me was very believable. And I'm not someone who believes people just because they say something. Again, you guys know that I dated a severe pathological liar, so I am very keen on never believing anyone when they say something right away. Um, I have to, you know, dig into things. She seems very truthful. Now, she explained how Shane and Jeffrey had convinced her to make that bi sister video, canceling James Charles because they were tired of James taking a lot of the views and money from their content. Now, this seems like an extremely plausible thing to do because YouTubers are very competitive with each other, which I will never understand because I don't understand why we all can't just be like happy for each other's success on this platform. Like, other people's success does not intimidate me, it inspires me. If I can't get successful by my own accord and by my own hard work, then what's the point of being successful? And by the way, Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star, y'all have enough money. Y'all have enough money, I don't understand why you need more. Jeffree Star has literally like 5 million, 20 grand purses. And to me, 
I genuinely don't even have like 20 grand in my bank account. So like, why are you, I just don't understand what the point of like trying to cancel James Charles and make up all these stories and start this whole narrative about him when in actuality, you guys are the monsters. I think genuinely as a community, we need to stop supporting Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. I just think that they have done so much harm and they are not a positive influence on the YouTube community, nor are they a positive influence on young children. I think that at this point, there has been too much, not only allegations, but actual pretty hard proof that these people are monsters that they have done and said and been just terrible people who have done terrible things. And at this point, why is anyone continuing to support them? And this is why I don't support big YouTubers again, because they become so convoluted in their ideologies. They become so toxic and manipulative and money hungry and greedy to the point where they would destroy anyone in their path in order to get another dollar. And to me, that's unacceptable to get to that point. You should be making content on YouTube because you genuinely enjoy making content on YouTube because you love your subscribers. I make content because I love you guys, because I genuinely want to hear your opinions on what I make, because I want to see you guys smile and laugh and be happy and feel empowered I want to change lives. I want to make a difference in your lives. I want to help people. And the fact that there's people on YouTube who don't have those same values and morals and goals is disgusting to me. I think we all just need to be a little bit more cautious of who we support online. I think we all need to be more wary of these people and we need to stop letting things go and passing things off as just a joke or just dark humor. Because at the end of the day, dark humor is one thing, but actual harmful ideologies is not. I don't have much else to say on this. I just wanted to like put this out there to get your guys' opinion on the entire situation. What do you guys think about this? Do you think these people should be canceled? Do you think they should be deplatformed? Do you think they should be held accountable? Do you think Tati should still be held accountable? Do you think Jeffrey and Shane, do you believe the story? Let me know what you guys think down below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.